I can remember even that day, like people were like looking for him or something. You know, it was cra it was crazy. You know, I ain't gonna lie. And that studio, that's yo, bro, like that specific studio. There's only one way in and one way out. Ronnie J is a producer who has worked with the biggest artists on the planet, from Kanye to X to Eminem, and he continues to have one of the best runs in hip hop. He is now making his own name as a solo artist with his upcoming project, Jupiter, and continues to build his brand. He also has one of the best producer tags in the game. Welcome to the virtual Thoughtbox slash Zoombox. How are you feeling today, Ronnie? Yeah, thank you for having me, bro. Um, I'm feeling great. I'm out here in sunny LA. Feeling, feeling great, bro. Well, I want to take you back to before you were in LA. Uh, we're going to go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah, this is crazy, bro. This right here is nostalgia for me. What, <laughs> what, what, what do you recall about <clears throat> being in your living room, just making music as a kid? Bro, I just recall right now me being in New Jersey, in Collegewood, New Jersey specifically, and um, not even really knowing too much about if I needed a drum set or not, I was so young. I just knew, I just knew like I didn't have one at the time. So I used to just go go in the kitchen, grab all the pots and pans that I want and literally set them out. And I remember I used to even plop them up on pillows as well, you know, and just like start banging. And then my mom and dad, they realized like, yo, like, my son likes drums, you know? And then I remember I had like a birthday party at McDonald's and then I got my first drum set. <laughs> then what was it like when you got your first drum set? like? that first bro, moment. I was the happiest kid ever, bro. I, I felt like I got like a, I don't know, bro. I guess a million dollars that birthday. <laughs> I didn't even know what a million dollars was, but that's how I assume I felt, you know? It felt great, bro. I was like, like, wow, like I'm really doing it. Did you have music instilled in you prior to that from your family? I mean, I grew up in church, bro. So it was like, I mean, my dad played drums a little bit as well. Um, My aunts on my dad's side, like they could sing. You know what I mean? So I feel like, yeah, we, we always had some type of musical talent that ran through the family, you know? And, and I know that this was your first uh, introduction into hip hop. Yeah, this is crazy, bro. This dropped uh, when uh, that song Grinding was just such a huge hit. And I could just remember just getting so many different detentions and just like getting in trouble, getting kicked out of class for banging on the table, you know? And I just remember just me, me just being such a huge fan of them. Uh, I asked my mom for for their album for Christmas and I got it and I was just so happy and I just remember just banging it, bro, like nonstop and just that beat, bro. I, I still could do that beat, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and then full circle, you get to work with good music and push out, like, it's crazy how it's things It's crazy, push. bro, because like, I was literally, yeah, I was literally with uh, both of them, like Pusha T and, and his brother and like, I still haven't told them yet, you know? But that's gonna be cool though. Like once I'm able, like once I feel like it's the right time to let them know. Maybe they'll yeah. see this. Yeah, nah, bro. This is like my homie, bro. My right hand man growing up, bro. Like we literally did it all together, you know? And um, he just taught me so much. And, you know, shout out his mom as well, bro. Like his mom is the, is the first person to ever put me on an airplane, you know? Well, she paid for like, like an, like an Orlando trip that we took or whatever, so. I have so much love for him and his mom, bro. And like, bro, like I said, like we literally did it all together, bro. We even took like our girls to prom. I mean, not prom, but like, like homecoming together. Um, we just did it all, bro, you know, like literally, so. In, in, in terms of, cause I know you talk a lot about how he's really responsible in terms of getting you into music and like pushing you, but what was the moment that you decided personally to take things seriously and to try to go to the, that next level and like really uh, conquer your craft? I mean, I knew that like instantly, bro. Like as soon as I seen him succeeding in it, I was like, yo, like, you know, like I, first of all, I wanted to be successful. I wanted, I wanted to change, you know, my family's lives. And I just like seen how it was working out for him. And I just had no doubt in my mind that it were, that, you know, it would work out for me as well. It's just that he was doing it up North, like in a tri-state area. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I, I wanted him to do his thing and I wanted me to do my, my own thing as well. So I, I left and I went to Miami and Miami didn't even have a scene yet. I mean, they did, but like, I didn't know anything about it. So I just decided to go there because of the weather and I love palm trees, the whole scenery, the whole yeah. vibe. And then uh, it just worked out for me, bro. And I created my own, my own lane, you know? Oh yeah, 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 that's the homie too. <laughs> that was, was he, was that your first song that you recorded was his song? Um, yeah, just about, it's basically like, yeah, one of the first songs. I forget exactly the name. 
But uh, yeah, I actually met him through uh, Charlie Heat as well. And that was like Charlie Heat's right hand, right hand guy with the music shit. And um, yeah, no, shout out Young Savage as well, yeah. I yeah. think he changed his name though, so he's not really named Young Savage anymore. Sean Smith, what's up? What was it about criminal justice that interested you? That's crazy, uh, Florida Memorial. Um, as far as criminal justice, bro, like, I just remember asking a lot of questions, you know? Like, in my lifetime, just people being like, man, you asked so many questions. So I felt like, you know, like, that was, like, I don't know, like, a good a good thing to have, you know, as far as, like, getting into criminal justice. And, like, I used to always watch Channel ID, um, which has all that type of criminal stuff and criminal minds. Like, I used to love criminal minds. So I just felt like it would be fun, you know, like, actually being on real scenes, trying to figure out, like, what, it, what exactly happened. And I'm already, like a thinker i'm a deep thinker you get me and i think of every scenario and every situation so i feel like i would have been great at it well i'm sure you put that analytical thinking into into creating songs too in some ways like what should go where which parts deserve an extra volume like all that stuff that you have to do as a producer probably goes into it yeah no nah, definitely bro it definitely helps what, what was your experience like at the art institute in miami uh it was it was cool bro it wasn't you know for a long period of time but um you know the way that even happened was like i i literally just like looked up the school on like facebook that was like when facebook was kind of like lit and uh i found this this kid poppy year who um who i felt like you know yo, shh. come here come here Hold on, let me grab my dog yeah. But yeah, basically, bro, he, he kind of like, you know, was, was just like, yeah, you know, you, you should you should come, you know, like there's a lot to learn. More than anything, there's a lot of connections. Um, but I specifically went there just so I can go back to Miami. You get yeah. me? And then I had my dad, because, <clears throat> you know, mind you, first school I went to was for the Memorial, so I already got my first taste of Miami. So I wanted to come back. I didn't want to stay in Jersey. So that was kind of like my excuse to come back to Miami. Cause my dad was always like, yo, you gotta be in school, you gotta be in school. And it's not, it's not, it's not that like, I don't think he didn't believe in me, but I don't know if he thought that, that me, you know, living my dream out was really as possible as it is, you get me? So I was trying to make him happy at the same time, make me happy, you know? And you, you ended up making connections there and... Yeah, yes sir, shout out Denzel Curry. <laughs> Did you know you had something special with threats? We don't take kindly the threats, no, we don't take kindly the threats. Slide for the free, kill for the feet, pull out the stick, then I pull out the ski. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure, yeah, bro. Off rip. You yeah. knew when you heard it? Yeah, I, I knew it immediately, bro. Like, when I first made the beat, before anybody even rapped on it, I knew. And um, it was just so different, but, you know, at that time, and even, you know, still now, I was just pushing for something just unique, you get me? And um, <clears throat> it was that was a really simple beat. You know, and uh, it was like really repetitive, which is how a lot of hits are. And that was back when SoundCloud was just like crazy, going crazy. And we dropped it and got so many plays. <clears throat> and I, like I say all the time, you know, when I should drop, I thought I made it. You know, I didn't really have any knowledge of like what making it actually is. But, you know, that was just the beginning. So when did you first notice that things were really blowing up with that song? Like, was there a moment you looked in like a certain amount of plays or a certain day where you're like, oh, wow. Literally the first day that it dropped, bro. I think it hit like a million or something, like crazy. But literally the first day it dropped, and then like my Instagram went from like like getting no traction to like mad people hitting me like, yo, bro, the beat's insane. That's like nothing else. They were just saying all great things. I didn't hear anything bad about it. And then, uh, you know, those three guys that were rapping on it, having like their own like little buzz or whatever, just like made it even better. You know what I'm saying? And so. then how did, how did the talks come of you officially joining C9 and Raider Clan? Uh, it was more or less just like I was around, you know, like I was the go-to guy. Um, and then at one point, me and Denzel, we started living together. So it just really just made sense. And like, that was just what it was at the time. You know, it made sense. So. Yeah. What does this guy have to do with your journey? Because I've heard you mention him uh, a couple times briefly, but it seemed like he reached out early, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's my dog. <laughs> what was his first time reaching out? <laughs> Bro, so uh, this guy reached out when I was literally sleeping on my boy's floor. Roaches on the floor. It was horrible, bro. Like I literally just like hated life. But the only thing that truly made me made me happy was just creating music. And um, I just remember one night, my boys like they went out to the club, and I was like, yo, like I'm not going to the club. I have no money. I have nothing to wear. It's like it's pointless for me. So I just stayed home. I checked my Twitter, and that guy DJ Carnage just like tweeted me like in all caps, like ultimate. 
which is another song that I did with Denzel Curry that like went viral. So he did that. I had no idea who he was, but I seen he had a blue check mark. So at that time, it was like, wow, you know? <laughs> um, then I did my research and I was like, damn, like, this is cool that this guy's reaching out to me. He's somebody, you know? What year was that? Uh, it had to be, when did that come out, bro? That was like 2016. 16. It's crazy because I don't think Carnage gets enough credit as an A&R. Because I was, I was talking with Kyle the other day and he... He said like Carnage brought him out to LA and let him like live with him basically when he was creating his early work. So yeah, like he really crazy. has that's a good year. Yeah, no, that story's crazy too, bro. And uh, just to back that up, yeah, Carnage is actually a great A and R. And maybe some of these labels should like sign him. Maybe he should do some deals or something. I don't know, but yeah, but no, nah, he's definitely. Um, anytime I link with him, he's always like looking up somebody else, like some somebody new that no one knows about. You know, so that's true. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Carnage. In terms of uh, the story behind this, I know you you've talked about it a few times, but like you're the only producer still, I believe, to produce a, a diss track on both sides, right? But Thanks. after yes. the songs come out, you said you're still sending beats to both of them. Did you ever have a conversation with either of them about the rap about Rap Devil or about the diss tracks? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. And um, nah, bro, I have never had an actual conversation. The only conversation I ever had about that, that song or whatever, like the diss tracks with uh, MG, was, was with MGK. And basically he was just super excited to drop it, you know? But it was like, that was like before he dropped it, but I knew like what was coming in the world, I had no idea. Um, what was that like knowing that it was about to just blow up and no one knew anything? I mean, bro, it was, it was more or less like, it just felt like, uh, it was definitely exciting, you know? Cause it was, it's just like, it's like knowing you have something so great. It, bro, honestly, it felt like I knew like I was already going to win the championship before the world knew it. You get me? So it's like, it's like, it's not fair. You get me? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. it's interesting. Cause I, I think like it was almost unspoken, but you could tell that I know MGK like genuinely fucked with your beats, but you could tell he almost wanted to like show like on a, on a level playing field, like, I'm going to rap over the same producer's beat so you know yeah. that we can like match up and you can compare us however you want, but like we're going to play in the same league at least right now. Bro, that, I mean, that was definitely the vibe, you know what I'm saying? And I just remember him being so excited about it and I was just happy that he was happy, you know, like it just makes me happy when, when I create something that makes other people happy. So really just, you know, um, yeah, bro, I mean, Crazy. I, I was I was honestly just simply happy about that, and then it just ended up being what it was. I didn't really realize exactly what it was until afterwards, and I'm like, yo, I can't believe I just did that. Like, no one yeah. else did that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it, it was crazy, bro. And um, it was never any issue. So. And then like, what was the last that, time? What was the last time you sent beats to M? Uh, it's been a while, honestly. Like maybe like five months ago. It's been a little while. Yeah. That was that was for his last album, or that was after that drop? It was after. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, who knows? Stuff, you know, you just never know. Like in this game, bro, you never ever ever know. It's so unpredictable. Well, speaking of unpredictable, I think this this guy's probably the most unpredictable person in the game right now. Um, oh yeah, this guy. But <laughs> <laughs> how? What, what was the decision? Like. It's even at that time he was controversial. Did you have any doubts about working with him, or like when the initial conversations came about? What was what was your thought process? Uh, I mean, literally, this was unpredictable, bro. I was just at the studio, and my boy was outside playing basketball, and he ran in. He was like, "Yo, bro, it's Kashi's outside." So I was like, "Okay, bet tell him come in." And then he actually came in, and he was just like, "Yo, what y'all working on?" Like real, like normal, just like, "Yo, what you working on?" Blase, blase. And he was just like, yo, uh, you know, I got the room down here, but can I work in here with you? So already like that low key threw me off because like people don't do that, you know? Yeah. But I was I was open to it because like I'm all about the great vibes, bro. You get me? So I'm like, yeah, like I, I know who you are. Like, let's do it. Why not? I make beats. You rap. Let's go. Let's, let's see what we can do. So um, that same day we made that song, the first day actually. So uh, it, was, it was a crazy experience, bro. I, I, I can remember even that day like people were like looking for him or something and like people were like circling the studio. It was, cra it was crazy though, I ain't gonna lie. Like, and, and that studio, that's, yo bro, like that specific studio, there's only one way in and one way out. So it was kind of crazy. Were you nervous? <laughs> like there was literally people like circling the block? I mean, yeah, bro. Like I was, I ain't gonna act like I was like, oh, scared, like shit. No, me. but like. Cause like he had security there too, but like, yeah, I was a little like nervous. Like, yo, this is like crazy, bro. Like I'm down the link, but. 
just what, what, <laughs> what was his security like at that point? Did he still have a lot of people around? Um, they were just super on point, bro. They were just like with it. Like they were just like alert, you know? And then uh, they ended up just like leaving. So yeah, like, getting out of there and then yeah. we all left. Would you do a song with him today, knowing knowing everything? I know there's been people on both sides. People have worked with him. People don't want to work with him. If he came to you and said, "Hey, I want to produce another smash with you," what would you say? I mean, we got more in the way. <laughs> yeah, you worked recently. Yeah, we got more in the way for sure, bro. Okay. No, the money don't stop. The money don't stop. You know, the money don't sleep. <laughs> so new body with Ty and Nikki. Uh, initially, right, it was supposed to be on Jesus is King. The track, le the track uh, list leaks and people go, well, we've heard this song. It was supposed to be on Yandi and uh, it's kind of not really with a Christian theme, right? And so then it gets taken off that track list. Fast forward, Donda track list drops and New Body's supposed to be on it. And some people are saying that Nikki's verse got removed. So before all of this, I want to take you back to like the creation. So from start to finish, you creating the beat, Kanye giving you the concept, Nikki getting on the song. How does this song come about? So bro, as much as I would love to talk about everything that has to do with that whole process, I can't. NDA? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very thankful, you know, for the opportunities like he, he's given me and like, I love being around. And I like, you know, more than anything, I just learned so much, so, and, um, He's a great guy, so yeah. <laughs> have, have, have you ha had any update on if the song is going to be on Donda or not? Because I know it was supposed to be. Um, you never know, bro. Let's just hope for the best. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. But the yeah. song is going viral on uh, TikTok, so that's pretty cool. Without yeah, I just hope Nikki's verse is on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, bro. You just never know. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. In terms of, uh, I know what you what you can say, because um, you you said that you he just kind of flew you out and then said the next day we're going to was it Colombia? Yeah, we went to Colombia. Colombia. Um, at that time, did did you have any idea that you were working on an album, or it wasn't until you got there that you were realized that? No, nah, I didn't know I was working on an album. Like. Exactly, yeah. You know, it was kind of just all fresh, like, you know, just trying to figure out the vibes. And then last thing on, on those sessions, I know that that was around the time, speaking of 6 9 that they were spotted in the studio together. Were you ever in the studio with both of them together? Yeah. With 6 9 yeah. and Kanye. What was, that? what was that? I know you probably can't say everything, but, like, just the energy in terms of 6 9 and Kanye, what is that experience like when you're just watch, watching it happen? It's legendary fun. Creative, fun vibes, you know? Yeah. It's fun, bro. It's just fun. Was it like collaborative? Like they were just tossing ideas back and forth? I don't want to say too much. Anymore. Okay, okay. All right, all right. We'll, we'll, we'll go off that. I was talking to Wi Fi the other day, and he was, and he was talking about living with X. And I know you've also lived with X. And um, I asked him what the strangest part of X's daily routine was, or like if there was something that stood out. And he basically said that there were times where X would go days without speaking to anyone. He would just be quiet, not eat, not talk, and then just snap out of it like two days, three days later. In your experience, was that, did you ever witness that? And was there something else that you noticed just about, because he's such an intriguing human being, was there something else about his daily routine that you found uh -oh. interesting? <clears throat> So, I mean, I, I believe what Wafa is saying. I never actually experienced that. I mean, I have, but not for, like, long periods of time like that, you know? Um, there's never been a time where, like, I walk up to him and he doesn't say anything, like, can't talk. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's never, like, it's never been like that. But, like, you kind of know when he doesn't want to be bothered. You get me? And it wasn't like we lived in a mansion. It was, like, a small-ass house. So, like, literally, I could just remember him, like, arguing on the phone, like, like at 3 a.m. all the time. Like, I would have to be like, yo, bro, I'm trying to sleep, you know? But, um... I don't know, bro. The kid was super cool, bro. Give me, like, bro, was just super real about everything. Um, <laughs> it's not as serious as like what Wi-Fi said, but like what stood out to me is that, bro, he would just literally either eat pizza, Chinese food, or hot popcorn, like every single day. Like that was his diet. Like, you get what I'm saying? And like he was just still hella fit. You get me? So it's just like that's that all he ate was just one of one of three things for all meals. 
Yeah, bro. Like when he was living with us, like literally, like, like that's all he would eat, you know. But I think you know everything about him was really just interesting, and uh, I just understood, you know, I just respected him for for who he is and what he brought to the table. Yeah, rest rest in peace to X, and 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 rest in peace to Juice World too. I was, uh, I mean, I, I never I, met him actually, but yeah, RP to Juice World as well. So so the, the song happened. Just was it through uh, the computer and like sending back and forth, or was it afterwards that? It happened through uh, my boy Scheme, DJ Scheme. So I was just sending Scheme beats, and then uh, one night Scheme just played him some shit. It happened to be one of mine, and then uh, yeah, bro got on it. The devil in my phone, he wanna talk, but I'm not really up for conversation. I heard he works super fast too. Like he'll just go in there and create a, a hit. I mean, that's that's how X was too, bro. Like. And it wasn't even like X wasn't the type to make music every single day. Like how these, like how all these guys are like, yo, I gotta have a million songs, you know. But when he goes in, he's going in and it's getting finished. You get me? Yeah, yeah. Where do you land on um, the spectrum of like having to create every day, or do you have to live your life a bit, feel inspired, and then you create? Like in terms of this new project, what was your process like? Yeah. So as far as this new project, um, I actually was going to drop Jupiter like 2018, but at the time. You know, the label that I was with they didn't really fully believe in it. So they were like trying to push it back and they wanted me to go this whole other route of like doing things their way. And I tried it and uh whatever. So then like recently they're just like, Oh, we wanna drop that project. So I'm just like, Okay, but uh I'm not really feeling those songs anymore. So I happen to be in LA for like a month and I just like recreated like majority of the projects and um just kinda quickly put it together, but it's still great quality. It's amazing. I know people are going to be really surprised and happy with it when they hear it. And it's uh, it's all different like vibes. You get me? It's not just one sound, one vibe. Yeah, I'm excited. Why, why Jupiter? What what does the planet have to to do with inspiration? Um, I just uh, I just feel like you know I'm the biggest at what I do in terms of you know uh, just the artist producer thing. I don't believe there is any producers out there like me. But, you know, I was inspired, bro. You know, growing up by BBC, you know, Billionaire's Boys Club, uh, with Pharrell. So, yeah. just a bunch of things that play into it. I have a whole sleeve right here. That's like a galaxy. I don't know if you see. It's like a galaxy over here. I have um, I have a rocket ship right here that has like a guitar on it. It's like a guitar rocket ship. Wow. Which is dope. And uh, I, have a, I have Jupiter like all here. Like, you know, it's like all spacey stuff here. And then I, oh, I have a moon, man. I don't know if you can see that. Let me see get a little closer. See the moon man right here? Yeah. And he has like the Chanel patch on him, so it just kinda all made sense. Like, you know, that's kinda like where I was in my life. I'm still there, but I'm you know, I'm already working on the next album. So thank you so much.